And so I'm going to do one quick practice run of chapter two to make sure that's all clear. And then, and then I'm going to continue on to do the actual run. All right. Does that sound fair? All right. Let's do that. So I'm going to go over real quick what the rules for my, what the rules for my speedrun are. Um, generally speak, I'm only going to use Royal Guard style. Um, so I don't, I'm not going to use any other style throughout the entirety of the run. I'm not going to use Trickster, I'm not going to use Swordmaster, I'm not going to use Gunslinger, I'm not going to use Quicksilver, I'm not going to use Doppelganger. Just Royal Guard, whole way through. So there are some interesting situations that will happen with that. Um, and it does give way to some interesting boss fighting strategies. But it's basically just to negate damage. Um, I have no... It's New Game Plus. So as you can see, I have a fuck ton of orbs. I have all these vital stars. I have all these gold orbs. Um, and I have a lot of... And I have a lot of red orbs to buy stuff if I need to. Um, I'm doing this on very hard. So... Again, this is just a practice to show you, to give you a little glimpse of what's going to happen throughout the run. Like, I'm going to get fucked up a lot, but then stuff like that will happen, and that's why Real Guard's interesting. Otherwise, n really no restrictions. Um, it will start once I start, once I, once I go from difficulty select to chapter one. That's when the speed run will start, and it'll officially end the clock at the last hit of Virgil 3. Now, unfortunately, um, because I'm using the Elgato default streaming, so I'm using the default streaming program on the Elgato, I will not be able to have a clock on screen, so I'll just have to use my clock on my phone on hand. Unfor um, and that's unfortunate because I couldn't, like, um, I was having exp exp problems the whole week before, so I couldn't figure out how to get that properly set up. I promise if I ever do, if I ever do something like this again, I'll, I'll work really hard to figure it out a while beforehand. So anyway, let's get this started. Uh, let me just grab my... Oh yeah, by the way, this is on turbo mode. Uh, for those who don't know what turbo mode does, it's a special mode in DMC3 where you can boost the game's speed by 20%. That includes everything. That includes your hits, that includes enemy hits, that includes everything. So I'm just going to get my stopwatch started up here. Um, reset, starting at zero. We're going to start in three, two, one, go. Now I messed up immediately, right from the start. I messed up the first parry, and badly messed up the second parry, because they blocked, um, and so I didn't do the follow-up, which means I lost a lot, I would have immediately killed those guys within the first three seconds, if I had done it right. Unfortunately, I missed out on it, because I mistimed the first parry, and as you notice, I took a little bit of damage, because that's what happens when you mistime the Royal Guard. So not getting off to the strongest start, but not getting off to a particularly bad start either. Now what I'm doing there is um, something that Devil May Cry allows you to do, and that's jumping off of enemies. So what I'm, do is, what I'm doing is I'm doing Killer B, which is one of Beowulf's moves, and, um, and then jumping off of him, to, and then doing it again, so I get to do the special dive kick loop.
126, not a bad start. Um, I can usually do it and just... I, I lost a lot of time, though, especially from how bad I did at the start. However, um, second chapter, this is a very hit and miss for how well I'll do. Now, that's what I'm trying to go for. Whenever I do um, in, like, at least these two chapters in particular... Now the fun thing about the red enemies is that they're very easy to juggle and they're also very easy to um they're very easy to do the die kick loop on. And for like the first two chapters, um the optimal setup at least for me um the one that I've been getting the most results with has been Ebony and Ivory Ebony and Ivory with with Spiral. Um, just because of the bomb enemies that are really easily blown up with how, um, with just the spiral, and then you can cancel it with Ebony and Ivory shots. And Beowulf is just, I, in my opinion, it's the best weapon in the game for a Royal Guard. And what you saw there was what's called the Devil Trigger Explosion. Um, the Devil Trigger Explosion is you just hold L1, and then those little orbs you see like start to fill up with a little red light. And then you release them all at once and it le releases a huge explosion of damage. Alright, so mission three. Just run through here. Devil trigger real quick. Run through it because I don't care. Now see these enemies, um, the purple guys in the white in the white clothing. They're actually the easiest enemy in the game to combo because they're really lightweight and they're also t really tall. So their hitbox, so it's very easy to um, it's very easy to jump cancel with how big their hitbox is. Now what I want to do is I want to get. Um, is I want to get the red guys to attack me real quick because they're very easy to it, it's very easy to parry their attacks it's, and I want to build it up so that when I get to Cerberus at the end of this chapter I'll have a full royal guard bar and so I can deal a lot of damage really quick right off the bat now see that's an almost full bar so um, all I have to do is parry one attack from Cerberus and um, I have a full guard bar. And for Cerberus, I want to switch the Spiral with the Shotgun, and I want to switch Beowulf with Agni and Rudra. Because... Agni and Rudra is probably the best boss weapon for a real guard. Um, just in general, just because of how... Um, just because of how many hits you get on him. Because Cerberus has three heads also, um, this weapon gets really strong against him because he also has three hitboxes. Well, actually five if you count the legs, but like, just not counting legs. And as you saw there, I just got a ton of damage because I released all that Royal Guard bar in one single attack when he did probably his biggest attack. Just that slam. And so I cleared Cerberus in about... 10 to 15 seconds.
All right, 226. That's even better than my last record. My last record was 230. Okay. Um, now, for this chapter, I want to switch it up a bit. I don't. I want to go Shaka and Spiral. This is the this is the loadout you'll, you're going to see me use throughout most of the game. Um, this is the loadout I'm best at, and this is also the loadout I think is the strongest for my particular playstyle. I'm not, um, you're not going to see me use Cerberus, you're not going to see me use Nevin. Um, those are a bit too te technical for me. You're not going to see me use Agni and Rudra outside of boss fights. Um, and that's generally how you're going to see me do stuff. So. so, there's some dudes over there. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to get the Devil Trigger Explosion charged up, and I'm going to parry this wall hand, so I can build up a full world guard bar. And you're going to see what I'm going to do with this in a minute. Because those are probably one of the most annoying enemies in the game. But luckily they have no health. So they're, um, if you actually do manage to, t to just get a, if you manage to get on them, you can just eliminate them pretty quickly. The problem is that they're, is that they move back really fast. And they also have some of the most obnoxious projectiles to try in Royal Guard. Too hard. Into here. Now this guy over here, if I don't hit him first, he's gonna get stuck behind this wall. So he's just gonna cost me extra time running back here. This guy as well. Now see, the reason I'm sticking so close to the door is two reasons. Um, for one, if I kill, the closer I kill him to the door, the faster I can get to the next room. And for two, I can still parry the wall hand and build up enough real guard bar to deal lots of damage at once. That's generally why you'll see me stick closer to the door. Now here, um, there are two like octopus looking enemies that will just only attack if your back is turned. So what I want to do is get them close enough to me and also get their hitboxes active so that I can do so that I can do the double trigger explosion to both of them. Unfortunately, I got very unlucky and they attacked me at weird angles this time. So that was pretty rough. Um, and so it cost me a few seconds there. When they both attack me from like the same angle, it's very easy to get um, it's very easy to get them both in the Royal Guard, not the Royal Guard, the Devil Trigger Explosion hitbox. Um, I wasn't fortunate I wasn't fortunate enough to get that though, so they just kind of they kind of screwed me over really hard. So I get to the Worm Boss. It's pretty easy, honestly. It, like there's almost no reason for this boss to even really be a threat. Um, and you can also do extra damage while he's in the tunnel by having a spiral, which is why spiral is honestly one of the best weapons. Like, just one of the best guns, arguably.
And nailed it. Just gonna stinger my way through here. All right, looking at about 12 and a half minutes so far. Now the shotgun and the spiral, um, they make a pretty good combination for these enemies as well. Um, the shotgun for when they get close and also to cancel the spiral shots. Um, and the spiral just immediately makes these enemies stone. And if you don't know these enemies, um, they are going to keep multiplying until you, unless you break them while they're turned to stone. You can only turn them into stone with the guns. So, um, what you do generally is you just pop them, is you just pop them with your gun, you turn them into stone and break them. Because you saw you multiplied right there. Okay, so, um, Jester has, like, a random pattern for which attacks he's going to use, um, but if he does one, sp if he does one specific attack, I'll be able to very easily get a lot of, all, a lot of my real guard bar filled up. It's not this one, unfortunately. Um, when there's one portal, that's the attack I'm looking for. When he does that attack, um, I can royal guard everything he shoots out of it. Instant, um, very easily and from there I'll be able to stack a ton of damage on him and that dive kick loop I talked about you can also do it with the shotgun oh this is the one Now this is the only Jester fight in the game you actually are obligated to do. Uh, this is the only one restricted by a red wall. So luckily I never have to deal with him again, especially when he gets particularly annoying with the later fights. Like when he's got the crazy circus ball. And I have the astronomical board, which is gonna... All I'm going to do is just come up here. Get the Vajra. Now you might notice that um, sometimes when I do the Royal Guard parry that I'll jump. Um, the reason I do that is because jumping has invincibility frames. So I can jump and cancel that into the Air Royal Guard. So I can give myself more frames to Royal Guard and make that a little easier on myself so that I have less room for error. Because as much as I like feeling myself um, with doing Royal Guards, I don't want to mess up because especially on uh, very hard, on the harder difficulties, you will just die. Like straight up die. When I get to one of the Virgil fights, you'll see what I mean. Because um, a lot of his attacks um, can't really be Air Royal Guarded consistently just due to the hitboxes of and them also all being on the ground. So... I have to do that pretty, um, I have to be pretty honest about Royal Guarding his stuff. And you'll just see how much damage I take when I mess it up. Yeah. 
All right, so now I have a soul of steel, which is going to let me go up here. Unless I drop myself. Now we're going to get to an elevator, which can um, be sometimes annoying, but sometimes you can just clear it really easily. Um, what's going to happen is enemies are going to come down at one point, and then they're going to weigh down the elevator. And if I let enough of them on at once, I'm going to I'm gonna come all the way down and have to start up again. So what I want to do is I want to double jump um, when I first get on the elevator a whole bunch, so they'll come down early. So I have more time to so I have more time to beat. Rogard um not Rogard. Uh Devil Trigger Explosion does take care of them really easily. But I will since there's a boss like right after this elevator. See that's what I was talking about. Um I messed up there. I messed up really hard, and I'm gonna lose a few seconds of that. I'm gonna lose probably I wanna say at least a full 12 to 13 seconds, and that's going to suck. And then that can happen. Um, I was making this mistake earlier a lot. Uh, I have to... Now to compensate for how badly I'm doing on this elevator, I'm going to have to just straight... I'm going to have to do absolutely perfect versus Agni and Rudra. There's no room for error in that fight now because of how bad I messed up this elevator. Like, that's probably at least full... Um, that's like 30 seconds now. 30 seconds off my time. And that's painful. That's straight up painful. Alright, so made it through there. Um, at least I have full health and double trigger by the time I fight Agni and Rudra. So that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, I don't have any real guard bar filled up, but they're generally not that difficult. Um, at least to fill up the bar in. Generally, I just like targeting Rudra first, um, though, though I want to kill them both around the same time. Um, though f I usually want to target Rudra before he can get the before he can get his wind spell power up, because that causes a lot of problems. And I'm really messing up here, like really bad. Like I'm I'm missing a lot of my parries. Now watch this. That's the fun part of playing Rule Guard. And I fucked up. So, um, this is why I have the yellow orbs around. That's not. That's fine.
Okay, now I want to target Agni because I don't want one of them to live. There we go. Double trigger explosion and the Royal Guard release is, um, it adds a lot of damage. Just straight up. Um, just both of them together do way too much damage if you have the Royal Guard bar filled. Now this chapter is going to be really quick um, because I don't actually have to do any fighting in this chapter. I'm just going to run through here. I'm not going to use a double trigger run um, because there are going to be some enemies there and then I'm going to double trigger run from them. Now, fun thing that I didn't show you there is that um, if you time it right, you can actually parry the spikes. Um, I don't want to risk it though just because I... Um, if I mess it up, that's losing a lot of time and losing a lot of health. That's just going to be bad in the long run. And now we get to a really interesting chapter, which is chapter seven. Um, this chap, the next chapter is going to be uh, the very first Virgil fight, Virgil one, uh, and that's where I'll be able to showcase the damage I'll take if I mess up. So that's going to be really interesting, and they're also going to showcase another enemy that I can do my shotgun loop on. So this is going to be an interesting chapter, so to speak. So go down here. I messed up my double jump twice. Like four times, actually. Okay, so what I meant to do was that the whole time. But I was at a bad angle. Unfortunately, this part, I can't make go any faster. All I can do is know where the next spot's going to be. Here are these chest enemies that I actually don't have to fight. Like, I don't have to care about them in the slightest. Here we're going to see the enemy generators, who are... Guys that I can shotgun loot because they don't get staggered when I shoot them. With my shotgun. And by staggered, I mean blown away. Because for most normal enemies, the shotgun will just, um... Pop them away like... A good... Uh... Yeah, about that, like that. But those enemies, um... Since they're enemy generators, they need to have a lot of... They... They don't get staggered. So you can stack a lot of damage with them on the shotgun really fast, especially since you can jump cancel off of them. And if the ghosts they print and if the ghosts they bring out don't get to the ground, they won't materialize as demons. So that's a problem you can just completely avoid if you do enough damage. And the shotgun loop is one of the ways to stick on a lot of that damage. Also, this elevator for some reason does not let me skip it. Like I have to, I have to watch this entire elevator ride.
All right, now the enemy that's gonna pop up right now. Um, this one, I this one is very fortunate for me because this guy always he doesn't start swinging, and when they start swinging is when they actually start summoning enemies. He doesn't start swinging for quite a while. He just walks around a bit before he does that, so it gives me an adequate chance to like fully kill him with the shotgun loop before he can really do anything. So I can save up my, um, so I can build up my Devil Trigger and use it on those two guys. So that room got cleared and, like, way quicker than it should have been. Just because he didn't start swinging. Now these guys, um, I won't be able to kill them before they at least let out, at least before they get one round of enemies out, but that round of enemies they're going to bring out will let me get my Devil Trigger all the way back up, and so that's going to be good for when I fight Virgil. Also, this guy. Because he also has really easy attacks to parry if you get the timing right. Once you figure him out, he's actually, like, really easy to fight. I could just do this. Just, just do that. Just shotgun loop him forever. Then when he disappears, pop. Shoot, 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 shoot. Pop. And this is my strat for starting off the Virgil fight really strong because I have um, I have the Royal Guard bar all the way filled up, and I have full Devil Trigger. So all I gotta do is get the full Devil Trigger explosion timing set up, and then just basically not die. So I can so once I start hitting him, I can hit him with the I can hit him with the full Royal Guard release, and that'll be fine. I'll be no problems. Everything will be Daijobu. Like, you see what's happening when I'm messing up my parries, though? Like... I'm taking some serious damage from that, but... But the reward I'm getting for when I actually do successfully parry him is pretty substantial. Oh, God damn it! I almost had it without having to use an item. Almost had it. I almost had it. Just one stinger. And if I would have chose to dodge roll instead of trying to parry it, I would have... Ugh. God damn it. That's... That's stressful. Oh, well. Okay, so this chapter sucks. This chapter sucks really bad. Like, this boss is not hard. However, there are some weird timing things... Um, involved in fighting it and it will straight rob you this boss will just straight rob you with how much damage it does it's just straight up highway robber what I'm trying to do is oh fuck it ah. wow okay See, I was trying to do a cool trick shot that would have saved me a few seconds um, that I had got down yesterday, where I would just shoot it with the spiral from like 700 feet away. 
because they actually also break when you shoot them. So um, one strat that I've seen Japanese speedrunners do is just pop it with a gunshot. I try to be cool. <laughs> uh, that saved me like two seconds, but uh, getting hit cost me that same two seconds, so that was just n net nothing happened, basically. And there we go. I love when there are no enemies in an area. That just means I could stinger my way through everything. I don't have to worry about locking onto them on accident and stingering the wrong way. If this were a tool assisted speedrun, I could actually just consistently stinger and not care because um, for some reason they have this thing they can do where they can just stinger while not locking on. It's weird. Now see, this boss is going to spawn a whole bunch of enemies, but I want I I need to not kill them so I can jump cancel off of them. So I can do this to this section of the boss. So I can jump cancel off of um I can jump cancel off of all the regular enemies and and do a shotgun loop to this section of the boss, which will let me deal lots of damage really fast while still being out of the smaller enemy's range. That's if I do it right, of course. And just to be safe, I'm going to use a Vinyl Star. Um, like, those orbs do too much damage. Like, you just saw that. That was, that, that was it. That, that was all the damage. I would have taken that. I would have died immediately. Like, you saw straight up that... Those orbs do way too much damage. Like, I get punished less for fucking up fighting Virgil than I do fighting this boss. Like, every Virgil. Virgil, t uh, Virgil 1, Virgil 2, Virgil 3. They all don't hit me as hard as this boss when I fuck up a parry. Here comes a moment of truth because this part, this laser, does again lots and lots of damage. Like I also want all the all the little purple energy balls to hit me at once, um, so I can get them in one solid parry. Um, so I want to be as close as possible whenever he launches them.
Here comes the laser beams. As I said, <laughs> um, I get fucked up really hard versus this boss. Um, like, no matter how much I practice, I always fuck up at least one or two things all the time. He is my absolute worst boss to fight other than probably Arkham. Arkham is the only boss that has, like, caused me more problems as consistently. Okay, so that's clear. Problem avoided. Okay, so, um, this chapter isn't too hard. Uh, Nevin can rob me. Nevin can kind of rob you, but um, it's more. It's a lot of avoidable stuff that you really. She's. She's a boss that will pun. She's she's the boss to punish me. Like she punishes me for feeling myself really hard. Um, because her attacks are all like big multi-hitting stuff so if I parry all of it, it it's like really high risk really high reward because if I parry all of it there are a lot of hits on the real guard bar that I can just stick a lot of damage on um, however if I if I mess up especially if I mess up early on I am taking a lot of damage Also note for any kind of like grab attack you might get put in, um, Devil Trigger will get you out of it all the time. That includes these web attacks. So, unfortunately all those little guys, uh, all the tiny spiders have a lock on of their own so I have to friggin... I can't sting her when they're in the room. Ah, damn it. Okay, so I need to reset this because I stinged her the wrong way on accident. Here I'm just going to double trigger run to avoid these guys because I don't like them. I don't like them at all. Cause me too many problems and too much grief. Now luckily he's in the direction I need to go so that was convenient. Here these guys I don't even have to look at. These guys I'm not going to kill, but I do have to address. Otherwise, they're just going to shoot me in the back. So I just pop them once with the spiral and once with the shotgun, and they're knocked down, and then they spend all their time getting up so I can run past them. And here I get the Ambrosia so I can go and fight um, Nevin, and then you got to kill these spiders first. I can also shotgun loop these spiders, but um, and it'll do slightly more damage than the Beowulf, uh, than the Killer Bee loop that I do with Beowulf. But uh, then once they start blocking, the shotgun won't do any damage. So unfortunately, when they and when they start blocking Beowulf, it'll just clash, and then they'll um, and then they'll do their big attack that I can parry.
Avoid this. Okay, so I'm going to go here and get Agni and Rouger real quick. Oh yeah, um, remember when I mentioned that doing a jump would give me extra frames to Royal Guard because of the invuln on it? Um, Dante ha also has this dodge roll that'll let me do the same thing. Um, I only really use it for this fight in particular, which is why I'm mentioning it. So, I can't do damage to Nevin until I, well, undress her, so to speak. I gotta, I gotta break her dress, which, um, doing jumping Agni Rudra attacks is the best weapon for. Now, see, I was trying to do the dodge roll into the, into the parry. But I messed up the timing really bad, so. Like, that was way too early. Twice in a row. Now luckily if you take one of the hits in the air and you mess up your parry, um, she's going to just knock you back so you won't get all the re so you won't be able to parry anymore. Um, but you will avoid a lot of the damage. That's what I was talking about. Oh, don't want to die. Can't be feeling this too hard. There we go. Problem solved. Oh god damn it, camera angles, stop it. All right, we're clocking in at 46 minutes so far. That's a pretty solid record for how far we are right now. Uh, for the next next one, I'm going to want to go back to Beowulf, because Beowulf is the strongest. We're going to get going. Got the stone mask, because we JoJo's. Jonathan Jolsta. You know, I talk about JoJo's, and then there's an ability that lets you stop time later on. <laughs> I'm not too good at quick. Oh my goodness. I am doing all sorts of bad. This is not a good start to this chapter. Oh well. Sometimes I double trigger and run, sometimes I don't. Um, I usually save it just so that enemies later don't cause me problems. So I always have access to them. Right, I gotta... It's not, <laughs> I was ahead of myself there. Now these enemies, what I do here is I ignore them completely and dodge. Oh yeah, this is the other way I use the dodge parry. I parry these. I parry the bladed walls. 
dodge, 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 bam. Also works with jumps. Yeah, problem solved. Like, pretty much anything in the game that can hit you, you can parry. So that's, um, that's one of the more interesting applications of Royal Guard. So you can use stage hazards and such to get your Royal Guard bar filled up. Missing my parries really hard. There we go. Oh, I kind of, I kind of got it. I'm doing it too late. That's a problem. And the spiders actually go by audio cues. Um, so me playing with my volume off is actually a really bad idea just for the spider chapters. Because, oh my goodness, I got pushed by the other spider, so I got friggin' I it it caused a problem with the royal guard timing. Oh boy, that's bad. Um, yeah, I do really, I do really bad versus spiders. <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't have any devil trigger there, so I didn't, I, I wasn't able to, I wasn't able to pull the get out of jail free card. I just like, I just for some reason get really bad versus spiders. Alright, took a while to clear the chapter. It was very awful. I was very awful that chapter. Definitely not my strongest. Not my strongest showing in the slightest. But you know what? We cleared in 415, so we're still getting S ranks in time, so that's okay. As long as we can S rank the time, we're set. So let me just buy some more yellow orbs. And we're set. Luckily, there is never another situation where I actually have to fight the spiders. Like, literally, that was the last time in the game I'll be forced to fight the spiders. So, that's probably actually contributing to why I'm so bad at fighting them. I have so little matchup experience. So these guys... Hey, fuck you hitting me off screen. It's not fair. And also, these guys are assholes because they're one of the few enemies that'll just hit you from off screen. It doesn't usually. Um, you can fuck with the AI because they usually at least pop up on screen once um, before they do their attack. So you can, like, force. Um, so if you turn the camera to where you only have, like, one of them in the shot 
you can hit a lot of you can make a lot of enemies come into you and hit hit them from off screen which is um which is a dec- which is a pretty much my crowd control strategy for the first couple chapters but it doesn't work as well later on especially since there are enemies like that that will just straight up hit you off screen Now these guys are real assholes because they decided to come around when he was around, so that makes this enemy that would normally be really easy um, a gigantic pain in the ass. Because now my attention's got to be divided between these two things coming at me. Okay, I think I killed him, so that's resolved. Hey, what are you doing still alive? There we go. I took the hit, but I killed him, so it's problem solved. Those enemies, I don't think I'll ever get better at fighting. So, I'm going to make this a bit easier on myself. There's a green orb down here. And it's always there, and also a little statue there of Beowulf, so you know who we're about to fight. Who also gives me the best weapon. Oh yeah, and at this point in the game, the red enemies start doing this uppercut and just start charging at you, so it messes with their pattern a bit. Um, but if you get them to just do the back off attack, that's still going to be generally the same pattern that you can mess with. Stay over there. Now, Agni and Ruja does some decent damage versus Beowulf with the jump attacks. However, um, if I do jump attacks versus Beowulf, he's going to use his eye laser, which is kind of cheap. Um... And more difficult to parry, so I'm just going to stick on the ground and make him use these tags, which are much easier to block. And what's weird is that sometimes they just straight up whiff me, so the timing gets really funky. But it's a lot better than having to deal with eye laser. Use a vinyl star just to be safe. I tried to bury that. I 
That's gonna fall over here. And I mistimed it again. Damn it. Maximum safe. Yeah, I would have died. I would have died straight up. And that's what I was talking about, because all three of those attacks straight up whiffed. Okay. Beowulf, problem solved. I'd use two vital stars, but uh, generally cleared without a hitch. And we are clocking in at just about an hour, so we're making pretty good time. So this chapter, I get to spend the whole thing in double trigger, which unfortunately means I can't use a double trigger explosion. Um, because you can only use that and then go into double trigger. You don't get to use it and double, while you're in double trigger. So I'll do a lot more damage, um, which is going to be nice, but the double trigger explosion is really good for crowd control. And so that's going to cause problems. But then being in double trigger constantly is also really good crowd control. And every single enemy in this chapter um, is gonna drop green orbs. Get you back up there. Alrighty. Only like two rooms past here and I'm good. Now it's just these guys which are really easy to clear out because I can dive kick loop all of them.
these guys I don't have to care because I'm a double trigger and I run faster so like I really just don't even have to look at them these guys I still don't have to care again double trigger I run faster I don't even have to look at them Now, I may need to use a green or a vital star here, but I'm. it kind of fluctuates. Because he drops a green and I didn't have to use it that was nice um, because I managed to clear I managed to beat him in time and he always drops a really big green orb so that means that I can I can avoid having to use it as long as I kill him quick enough and since he's one of those enemies I can shotgun loop I can also just stay out of um, the uh, I can stay out of all these guys' ranges Boss fight time. Or is it? Dun dun dun. This boss fight kind of fluctuates for how well I do in it. Like with this boss, one thing I can do is like I can just, when he starts charging at me, I can just run up and pretty much just mash circle. Um, because the timing on this part, on real guarding that particular attack isn't very precise. Um, so as you saw, as you can see, I have like an almost full royal guard bar right now. Okay, so I got to the second phase of the boss really quickly, so that's nice. Um, he's going to be running that way, so I am going to run this way, cut him off. And when he goes to the center, that's generally when you just want to jump off, because then the... Because then it's gonna, then the carriage is going to light on fire, and then it's going gonna, it's gonna to do damage no matter what you do. Um, to stack on that damage really quick. Unfortunately, I didn't do it. I didn't do the parry time well enough to avoid getting hit, even though I did manage to get a parry off. Um, that was mainly just to get the meter then. Okay, now he's going towards the center there, so it's gonna be on fire. Avoid that, and I'm good. Fire you can parry. Um, it's just it's a little more precise than it looks. Damn it. Valstar be safe.
Now, that was actually really um, difficult timing to get. Because I had to jump that and because I parried it. And that's the only reason I managed to get on the cab. And it looked really cool, right? Um, the timing on that's a bit funky. But if you get it right, uh, I did manage to get... Uh, I, I got a pretty sizable amount of damage off it. And so that boss actually got cleared in much less time than it should have. We are currently clocking in at 1 hour, 9 minutes, 32 seconds. So now we get to chapter 13, where we get to Virgil 2. Virgil 2 actually causes me more problems than Virgil 3, which is kind of funny. Um, chess pieces, you can shotgun loop absolutely free without even thinking about it. Like, they freaking... And even most of their attacks um, are not going to hit you from shotgun loop range. So I can just sit here doing this, and they will just all break. Also does a lot of damage. This is a shotgun. It's a shotgun blast in the face. All right. Now I want to get rid of the bishops first because, um, not because of that magic, but because they can also heal. Um, and they can heal other chess pieces, so I don't want any kind of sustain so I can kill them as quickly as possible. Now, the see, difference between, um, in the second Virgil fight is the first fight he has Devil Trigger. Um, it's not that much extra, but it does give, it does change up his real guard timing because it makes his Baleful attacks faster with smaller gaps. Um, and they do also do more damage, of course. But, um, it's mainly the Beowulf moves that he gets that causes me more problems. Like, I had to really grind practicing versus um, Virgil 2 yesterday. And I just want to avoid him because I don't want to take any damage. I just want to get out of there. Like as you saw, that was two messed up parries in a row. There we go. Oh no, not that. Not there we go. Not there. Not there we go. That's not. That's not where we go. That doesn't go there. No, Virgil Dono Yamate. There we go. Nailed it. Okay. So... 
There we go, that's a lot of the problematic bosses out of the way so far, so next one that's going to cause real issues is going to be Arkham. Ugh, do not, do not look forward to the Arkham fight. Not in the slightest. Arkham fight sucks. Like, Leviathan was bad just because it robbed you. Arkham is, like, way worse because you rob you, and then halfway in, you don't get to even use your style or double trigger. And it sucks. And these enemies, these enemies just suck. Um, Agni and Rujo are pretty good against these enemies, but I don't like using, um, I don't like using them for the rest of the enemies in this chapter. I feel kind of crippled when I'm not using Beowulf. So I, that's why I only like using it for boss fights. Okay, problem solved. Luckily, I only have to fight them like probably three times tops the whole game. Was it three? Yeah, it was three. Um, at the start of one chapter, and then like in the middle of another after this. So, luckily, they're not going to stack too much time on me. Now see, um, these guys are called Sloth, by the way, the guys in the white outfits. Um, cool thing about Sloth is that they like never change their pattern throughout the entire game, so it's like it's always recognizable. Now I can, um, I might have mentioned I can do the dive kick loop on these guys as well, but it's a little, um, it's a little bit more difficult than the shotgun loop, at least on these enemies in particular, and it's also not safe, um, because the shotgun loop, I can do it at this height constantly, which is too high for them to actually even touch me. So 
the only enemies that can touch me at this height are the rooks and the knights. Um, which, if you don't know your chest pieces, is that tower and the horse. And by chest pieces, I mean DMC and chest pieces, of course. They're actually going to be on a chessboard later, and that's going to be a gigantic pain in the ass. Like, when we get to the queen, um, when fighting the chess pieces on the big chessboard, that is going to be... It's going to... I'm going to show you... That's probably the most obnoxious enemy in the game. Not the most obnoxious, but, like, just... Ugh. So, it's it's the most obnoxious thing on the board out of all the chess pieces. Just the queen. Oh, my goodness. And if you notice, they also have a pattern. Um, they also have a pattern to their movement that they're restricted in constantly. Like, they'll face a different way, but they're always moving the exact same way they should. Like, um, the, the knights, the big horses, they always move in an L shape. Because that's how the actual chess piece moves. Um, and the bishop always moves in a diagonal direction, because that's how the bishop moves. And the... Rook always moves in a vertical or horizontal direction. Like, they never deviate from that. Like, they can rotate, but they don't deviate from that specific movement pattern. Oops, gotta go this way. And unfortunately, I'm going to have to skip this scene of Dante catching a motorcycle with a bike chain and then doing cool flips and shit. But, uh, all right, clocking in at 121.53 so far. Making good time, making good time. We will be moving on to this chapter, Gate Crash Roots. Which isn't too bad a chapter, to be honest. All right, I'm going to go through here. And these enemies, this is like the probably one of the three times I actually have to fight them. And it's pretty fantastic. Because I never have to do this again. Because I only have to do this one more time after this fight. Because one of the really obnoxious points about them is that, as you can see, they can fade into the wall to where I actually can't get them. They're actually just using... Um, their they're actually just using wall hacks. I don't like wall hacks in my DMC3. Also, the ability to fly makes him absolutely painful. There we go. I actually, um, so there are only going to be two more that I ever have to fight. I mean that all together, I only have to fight seven of those enemies that are just like, oh, they're the worst.
Dodge like a champ. Oh yeah. Whoop. Well, okay. In the clear. Thank God, because I'm usually really bad at that, and I only took two hits. Thank goodness. Hey, I don't even want to look at you, okay? Excuse me. Oh wait, I think I might have to fight spiders one more time. Oh wait, I don't have to fight them, I can just grab it and run. <laughs> Hold that, spiders. Oh, whoops, gotta do it one more time. The last time, I gotta do it twice. Um, otherwise, it's gonna just send me away back to the other stages. That's right, I do have to fight spiders one more time. I was right. I was actually right. I was right the first time. I always forget about this bit because I don't practice this chapter enough. Spiders that I am infinitely bad at fighting. I am not your exterminator. I am not very good at this. Spider Man is my worst matchup.
Whoops, wrong way. <laughs> this chapter goes by pretty fast depending on how good um, depending on how good I am at fighting lady and I'm not very good at fighting lady, so this might take a bit. See, I was trying to be cool and slide on him and stuff, but uh, I'm just going to double trigger up through here just to make up for my lost time. Them to him, damn it. Just wasted all my devil trigger. Chess fighting time. Whoops, at the bad angle. Cool thing is, if the rook wants to shoot the laser from off screen, it will always give a little indicator on where it's going to go first. Just to be safe. I just want to do that once. <laughs> this is the Rising Dragon. It's a pretty, it's a pretty cool move. It does a lot of damage. Shotgun Loop still just ends up better though. If you do like a perfectly timed, I've only seen this in tool assisted runs. If you do like a perfectly timed, um, if you do a perfectly timed uh, Rising Dragon then you can actually do just, uh, you can break a lot of stuff just instantly. Like, chess pieces, you can pretty much just one-shot. Um, that worm boss in Chapter 4, um, you can do, like, half his health at, at once. Just, just right at once, just one-shot. Okay, I want that to bounce. Gotta get the balls to touch. Remember, kids, it's not gay unless the balls touch. There we go. 
And now we come to the third and final instance where I have to fight the Winged Angel guys. And luckily, I only have to fight these two. If I can just break this off of him and get them both to come around me, then... It'd really help if you didn't phase into the walls, thank you very much. Come on, come on, come on, get closer. There we go. About half damage, that's all right, I guess. Not as much as I wanted, I kind of wanted you to die, but, uh, uh oh. That actually, <laughs> that hit me waking up, goddamn. Ugh, these guys are annoying. It always hits at weird angles too, so it's like, I can never get the angle right to parry. I can never get the timing right. It's always a pain. Like, some, like sometimes they'll just whiff, and sometimes they'll just not. Eh. Because they always... It, because they never stay on one plane, they never stay straight on the ground or straight at that angle in the air. It's it's just always a hassle. Anyway, that's cleared. So I can go fight Lady. And this is gonna be not fun. Cause that fight's just running around. No, I did not mean to jump off. Losing a lot of time, taking a lot of damage I don't need to, jumping off when I don't need to. Thank you. Excuse me. I am really bad at playing. That's stressful. Taking way too many hits. 
At least I'm doing much better damage than I usually do. I just gotta get one good hit on her. And she's actually done. If I can catch her once trying to pot me. Not like that, she did the multiple missile launch, which actually I don't I don't get as good a hit on. I just need her to do the single shot at me. That's not fair. Can't shoot at me from raw screen. There we go. Okay, now that was actually terrible. So... We're gonna have to try and improve next time I do it. But uh, we're clocking in at a pretty solid time. We're at 1.40... 40. Well, 1 hour, 40 minutes, 45 seconds. So, if I can... I might actually beat my own record if I complete the next four chapters within the next half hour or so. I don't need to switch up my equipment. I need to buy more items. He's not particularly good at it. Wait for it. Wait for it. There we go. I don't need to do that, so I'm not going to. Gonna go ahead and devil trigger my way through this. Damn it. Almost had it. Now, since these enemies actually have a projectile, they can be kind of obnoxious sometimes, but uh, generally speaking, they're not too much of a problem. Especially since they are one of the very unfortunate enemies that I can dive kick loop. If you are an enemy I can dive kick loop, I really feel sorry for you, because you are getting dive kick loop really hard. You are getting foot foot dived. And now I'm going to go fight Doppelganger. This is a uh, interesting enough boss fight. Usually it takes me a while. Um, just because he doesn't take that much damage. So I'm just going to rely on good old Royal Guard and Double Trigger Explosion damage. Because there are certain attacks he has that are pretty easy to parry. Um, just this one particular one he has that's pretty easy. That one. Um, you know, the one I got hit, I just got hit by. So, like, there we go. Come on, come on.
See, the fun part about Royal Guarding is that not only does it give you damage, um, it also gives you double trigger, which means more damage. Oops. Help with my lock on happened. There we go. Damn it. There we go. Too early. Don't want to risk it. See, because when I die, I also lose my Royal Guard bar, so I don't want to, um... I want to, like, just... I don't mind how many Vital Stars I use, just as long as I can keep myself alive to get all the Royal Guard damage that I built up back at him. There we go. Now I go through the boss rush. Um, now before the boss rush, we get to the chessboard that I mentioned. And the chessboard is going to be really, really, really obnoxious. I, if I don't get it perfect, it is going to be. I am going to have a bad time. We're currently clocking in at 148. I want to get them all aggroed towards me at first because um, if I let them get all the way across the board, like with their normal movement pattern, then they're going to uh, turn into bishops, uh, bishops and knights, which is going to cause me all sorts of grief because I do not because bishops heal and healing is not good when the enemy has it. Like these guys, I want to axe off as soon as possible.
All right, queen is almost done, which is the most annoying chess piece, and there's no bishops to heal her, so this is going to be... if I, I might be able to get this done pretty quick. As long as I just don't take too much damage, so... Let's be safe here. This big explosion is actually pretty easy to uh, t time the parry with, as long as you do the jump. As long as you do the jump parry. Like, it's really easy, so you can stack up a lot of damage on him really quick. There we go. Alright. Relatively little stress, and problem solved. So now we get to the boss rush. And there are more of these guys, but I do not have to fight them, so I'm not going to. So the quickest way to get through this boss rush is to go um, Cerberus, Beowulf, and then Agni and Rudra. So I'm going to equip Agni and Rudra because it's the uh, freaking best loadout for all the bosses. And then we're going to go ahead and continue here. it up there. That's actually a lot of um, real guard bar I missed out on by messing up those berries. Now you can actually also jump cancel off Cerberus, but the thing is, is that it has to be at a very specific spot so it can cause problems on occasion. There we go. Haha. -ha. Remember what I said about Real Guard and the Devil Trigger explosion? That's exactly, that's like literally the exact thing I meant. I'm just going to back off because I don't want to mess up the timing on that. You can actually also jump cancel off Beowulf, so in this particular section, um, during his attacks, you can stack a lot of pretty much free damage as long as you don't get popped when he actually punches. Like there, like every time that I've been doing it. There we go. That's the first time I've actually parried that explosion. Back off.
right, Beowulf is down. Now we just gotta, um, now we just gotta go through Agni and Rudra. Okay, so now I want to target Agni. Unfortunately, I only hit Rudra. God damn. Well, I only did the really good damage to Rudra. So, that means I'm going to have to put a lot more focus fire on Agni here. Agni is a red one, Rudra is a blue one, for those who need reference. 